one, guys. And again, don't forget, keep saying your verses. If you keep saying your verses to any of the helpers here, you get points for your team. And remember, the team that gets the most points at the end gets a special prize. All right? So make sure you do that. Also, make sure you bring visitors, play hard in games. I'm going to go tally up all the point totals and the spirit to point totals right now. I need everyone to sit up straight. Sit up straight. There will be no talking. Okay, eyes and ears. Yes. Can I use the bathroom? Yeah, right here, bud. Okay, there will be no talking. All right, and everyone give your undivided attention to Pastor Price. He's right here. Everyone say hi, Pastor Price. Hi, Pastor Price. All right. Well, hi, guys. How are you today? Mr. Hoosens. Hoosen. Hoosen. Hey, thank you so much for coming to Vacation Bible School. I'm glad that you're here today. And I'm going to ask you guys for a couple things. I'm going to, I'm going to be speaking to you every day this week. And so I'm going to ask you review questions that you're going to have to remember to help me out. Anybody here able to help me during Vacation Bible School? Okay, got a lot of good helpers. Okay, here's what I'm going to need every day. First of all, sometimes I have things in my pockets. And I can't talk to people with things in my pockets. You know why? Because I put my hands in my pockets and then I find them. I don't have very much in my pockets today, but I do have my wife's cell phone. So I need somebody to hold it for me. Could somebody hold it for me, please? I need somebody very trustworthy. Okay, looks like, um, you know what? I'll bet this young lady right here could hold that. And you don't touch it and don't look at it and don't let anybody else touch it or look at it, okay? So that's your job during vacation Bible school. Here's something else I need. I need for you to do your very best at staying in your seat and sitting up straight, okay? Can you do that? Can you stay in your seat and, and sit up straight? And here's what I'm going to be doing. Today I don't have any, but tomorrow my pockets are going to have to be full of candy. The good kind, you know, not the kind that the people that don't know good candy have. They're going to have to be full of candy. And if I see a child who is sitting up straight and paying attention, and uh, not looking around and not talking to anyone else and not having to go to the bathroom or anything like that, then I'm going to have to uh, just go ahead and throw candy at them. And when I throw candy at you tomorrow, don't do anything more than pick it up and put it in your pocket. Okay? You do that? You do that for me? Okay, now here's the reason why I want you to be so quiet and pay such good attention. It's because what we're talking about right now is very, very true. Very, very important, and it'll help change your life if you listen to what we're talking about, because we're going to be talking to you in the next couple minutes from the Bible. Now, the Bible is God's Word. Literally, it is like God who created the world would be speaking directly to you and directly to me. And when God speaks, we should listen, shouldn't we? And so we want to be really careful, as much as it's hard to do, we want to be careful to sit up straight and pay close attention and listen to what God says, because if God is talking to you, and he has something very important to say. Today we're going to talk about creation. And I heard that uh, Mr. Taj got sucked up in a hole or something. Did anybody hear what happened with that? Yeah. Yeah, what happened? Luke, oh, wait, raise your hand. Don't talk without raising your hand. He got in that box over there oh, with another the man. He got in the closet? No. Yeah, with Why another man. You? Yeah. And somehow they traveled back in time, and they went to creation. Went to, oh, that is neat, because I'm going to talk to you about creation today. Okay, so tell me about it after after VBS on the bus on the way home, okay? And uh, I'm going to talk to you this morning about creation. I'm in Genesis chapter 2. The Bible's God's Word. He wrote it. And you know what? It's something about God. God made the world, and God made you, and God made me. I want to read you about it in the Bible, because some people don't know where they came from. You came from, from God making you. To create something means to make it. And here's something neat. I've made a lot of things before. I've built lots of different things. Uh, one time I built a box almost like that one. But I didn't build that one. But I've built some things before. But every time I've ever made something, I've made it out of something else. You know what I'm talking about? Uh, one time when I was a kid, I made a fort. Uh, Nate, you made a fort, didn't you? Yeah, so I, I made a fort when I was a kid, and I went down to my grandpa's shed. out in, It was a lean-to shed out on the farm, and I found a bunch of old boards, and I collected them all up, and I went to another shed, and I pulled nails out of the wall, and I straightened all the nails out, and I took them down in the woods, and I made me a fort. And my cousins and I had a lot of fun there, had good times. But I had to have a hammer, and I had to have nails, and I had to have boards to make my fort. 
And you've never made anything without making it from something. But God's different than you and me. When God made us, he created us. And to create something means to make it out of nothing. So we know what all the things God made, right? He made the heavens and the earth. He made uh, the sun, the moon, and the stars. He made the water. He made everything that's in the world. He made the fish, the birds, the animals. He made light, and he made darkness. He made the world to spin so that the sun is on one side of the world all the time. It's on the other side, and there's day and there's night. He divided that. But when God made man, he did something different. I'm going to read to you from the Bible what God said about when he made man. You ready for this? Everybody paying attention because we need to know this. This is creation week at PBS. Also, tomorrow, if you pay close attention today, tomorrow I'm going to ask questions. And if you answer the question, you'll get points for your team and you'll also get something from me. Okay, so we ready for this? Here we go. In verse 4 of Genesis chapter 2, first part of the Bible, the Bible says... The Lord God formed of the dust of the ground and breathed, or formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul. So now when God made the fish, and God made the heaven, and God made the earth, and he made the sun and the moon and the stars, he just went like this and he made it. it just, he just formed it with his hands out of nothing. But when God made man, it was different. You know, sometimes people will try to say, and they'll even teach you in school, that man is an animal. You ever heard that before? That's silly, isn't it? Man's a lot smarter than an animal. Not very smart if you think that you're an animal, are you? Well, uh, God, when God made man, he did something different. He reached down into the ground, and he formed man. So he put a head on man, and he put a neck on man, and then he put shoulders and arms, and he took put the torso, the chest, and the arms and the legs, and then he put all the insides and the organs, and he did all that out of dust. He formed it out of dust. But God did something very special with man that he didn't do with anything else. And I want you guys to understand this, because this is very special to you and very special to me. When God made man, he, he breathed, the Bible said, into his nose or his nostrils the breath of life. Literally, God's breath, he breathed on man. And when he did that, the Bible says man became a living soul. Now, I don't have time to teach you everything about that today, but man becoming a living soul means that we're different than the animals. It means that we're made, in the, the Bible says, in God's own image. In other words, when you look in the mirror, you are looking at something that is a picture of what God is like. Now, we're not God. We can't create something out of nothing, can we? You ever made something out of nothing? Some of you made some pretty neat things, but never made something from nothing. But God did. And when God made man out of nothing, my friend, He created him with uh, He created in him the ability to relate to Him. Now I want to read some things about about what happened with man and with God. And so uh, the Bible says in verse eight, the Bible says the Lord God planted a garden eastward in Eden. You ever hear of the Garden of Eden before? It's a garden that God made where man was supposed to live. And man's job, man worked before, he's always worked. God made man to work, and man worked in the Garden of Eden. And so uh, the Bible says, There he put man whom he had formed, and out of the ground the Lord God made the Lord God to grow every tree that is pleasant to the sight and good for food, the tree of life also in the midst of the garden, and the tree of knowledge of good and evil. And a river went out of Eden to water the garden, and from thence it was parted and became into four heads. Can you imagine with me just a little bit? Are you able to do that? Can you see in your mind, not see this place, but see a beautiful garden? See the ground with grass that's all neat. No weeds in this garden. Only things that are beautiful, the Bible says, that God made to grow. So beautiful trees. And they're trees like Pastor Price like. They're trees that you can eat things from. I don't really care about trees that don't grow something I can eat very much. I know people like trees for looking at. I like trees for looking at when I eat something that came off of them. I like orange trees. I like mango trees. I like papaya trees. I like apple trees. I like pear trees. I like prune trees. I like, um, I like all kinds of fruit trees. Banana trees aren't really trees, but I like them anyway. I, I like things that I can eat. Don't put your hand up yet, okay? So I like those things. And that was the way the Garden of Eden was. Anything in the garden that grew, man could eat. Man was made in the image of God. And God said, you can eat anything in the garden. But he said, there's one thing you can't eat. Now, let me read that 
to you, and we're almost done. Are you guys ready to be almost done with this part? Okay, just a minute. Okay, the Bible says, The Lord God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat. So mayest, thou mayest freely eat, means that you're free to eat any tree, anything that's in the tree of the garden, any fruit from it. But it says, But of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt not eat of it. For in the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. Now this week, guys, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about what it means to die. But today we see the reason why people die. This morning when I was riding the bus, some of the kids were telling me about a little girl that was hit on her bicycle. That's really sad, isn't it? When, somebody, when that happens to a little girl and her life is ended. But there's a reason that people die. Matter of fact, um, everybody does. Everybody dies. But that's... There's good news, and I want to teach you about and show you, but the reason people die is explained here. Because the Bible says there's a tree in the middle of the garden, and God told men, he said, I don't want you to eat of it. And if you eat of it, the day you do is the day that you'll die. That's a pretty stern warning, isn't it? So now here you have this massive garden, this beautiful place, and anything in the entire garden, Adam could eat. So here he's walking along, and he sees... Oh, I don't know, maybe a who's he, what's it fruit tree. And he picks the who's he, what's it fruit and he eats it. And then he's walking along over here and there's a whatchamacallit tree. And he picks some whatchamacallit. Oh, that's, that's better than the who's he, what's it. And he's walking along further and all of a sudden there's a thingy bob tree. And everybody loves thingy bobs. Don't you tell me you don't like thingy, thingy bobs because everybody does, right? He pulls a thingy bob down he eats it. Oh, it's good in the garden. And he's walking all around the garden. There are thousands of trees. I mean thousands of trees and all of them different and all of them delicious. You know, I don't know about you, but I like different food every day. Some people just want the same thing every day. Not me. I want something different every day. One day I want a big old fat juicy steak. The next day I want a big old fat lobster. And the day after that, I'd like a banana. And then the day after that, I might want a peanut butter and jelly sandwich with more jelly than peanut butter on it. Um, next day, I might want a ham sandwich with cheese on it. I like different food. And for Adam in the garden, there was all kind of food. It wasn't like he didn't have anything. He had thousands of trees, and he could eat any of the ones he wanted to. Those were the rules. Okay, so everybody understand the rules? Yeah. The rules are, in the tree, or in the garden of Eden, you can eat from how many trees? A thousand. Thousands of them. All of them. Except for the middle one. one. There was one tree in the middle of the garden. God said, don't touch that tree. If you touch that tree, what will happen? You'll die. die. You'll die. Okay, now I want to look at something here. And I want to uh, show you something that happened. It's, it's very sad, but there's a very, very good ending to it. So you've got to come all... How many are going to come all week long? Make sure you come all week long so you can learn the good ending. The story. So we're not going to tell you the good parts today. We're going to tell you, you and your friends, all week long. Okay? So here we go. Now the Bible says, Now the serpent was more subtle than the beast of the field, than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden? So God had made Adam a wife. And you know what her name was? Eva. Don't, don't shout it out. Don't shout it out. Put your hand up. I'll bet you know. Eva. 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 Eve. Yeah, that's exactly right. His wife's name was Eve. And he was sneaky. And Eve, she got tricked a little bit. Here's what happened. There was a serpent. A serpent is, you know what a serpent is? Somebody yeah. raise your hand. Somebody raise your hand. Yes, this quiet little lady right here. Yeah, a serpent's a snake. Well, the Bible says the serpent was more subtle. And the word subtle means sneaky. He was more sneaky than any beast in the field. So God made all the animals. Where were they at? They were in the garden with Adam. You remember this? And so here, there's a tree in the middle of the garden and Adam's not supposed to touch. There's all the animals, all the beautiful animals in the garden, and Adam is naming them, and he's taking care of them. And then there's all these trees, and how many of the trees can you eat from? Somebody raise your hand quickly. Out of them. Out of them. Raise your hand. I can't hear unless you raise your hand. All of them. Thank you. Fuji. Fuji. All right. Thank you, sir. Uh, he could eat all of the trees. He could eat from the fruit of all the trees. But he was not supposed to touch one. Well, he had a wife, and she got tricked by the serpent. It's a sad story, but it's, but it's an important story. Everybody needs to know it. Now, the Bible says the serpent was more subtle, that means sneaky or tricky or deceitful, than any beast of the field which God, Lord God had made. 
And he said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said, He shall not eat of every tree of the garden? He said, Did God say you can't eat of any of the trees in the garden? Was that true? Raise your hand, raise your hand. Was it true? Did God say you can't eat of any of the trees? What did he, is that true? No, that's yeah. not true. What did God say? Everything but one. Thousands of trees. All the most delicious things in the world. And Adam could eat it. Except for one. God said, don't eat of that one. And so the first thing the devil does, he's in the snake. And he says, the first thing, he said, did God say you can't eat anything? He's trying to make it look like God isn't good. You know something that, that oftentimes the devil tries to do? He tries to make it look like God isn't good. Boys and girls, listen to me now. Listen to me. I'm being as serious as I can with you here this morning. God is very good. And God loves you very much. And when God gave Adam all those trees to eat of in the garden, that was good, wasn't it? God, God made Adam in, like himself. And God made Adam to be his friend, to have what we call fellowship or friendship with Adam. God's very good. And the first thing the devil do will try to tell you God isn't good. He'll try to point at things in your life that aren't good. Something that happened to you that maybe you didn't have anything to do with. But I want to tell you something. God didn't do the bad thing in your life. The devil did it. If anyone did it, it wasn't God, okay? So people aren't good. The devil isn't good, but God is. You understand that? God's always good. Well, now, the woman said to the serpent, she said, we may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God hath said, ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. The serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die. Now let me ask you a question. Who made all the trees in the garden? Somebody raise their hand. Somebody raise their hand. Somebody different? Yes, young man, lady. God. God made them. Okay, did the serpent make the trees? No. Somebody with their hand up, tell me. Your hand's up. Jocelyn? No, he didn't make the trees. So how would he know? See, he wasn't God. He couldn't say whether you'd die or not. He called God a liar. And he wasn't the one that made the trees. Why would he do that? Well, because he hated God. And uh, he said, Ye shall not surely die. And here's what he said. For God doth surely know that in the day the ye thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. And the devil told Eve a lie. He told her a lie. He said, If you eat of that tree, you'll just be like God. Boys and girls, I'm going to finish with this today, but I want us to understand this. First of all, God's good. Did you know that? God's always good. God loves you. The second thing is this. The devil never tells the truth. The devil never tells the truth. And he told Adam, he said, if you eat of that tree, or Eve, he said, if you eat of that tree, you're going to be like God. Boys and girls, there's only one God. There's only ever been one God. And only God is like God. You can't be like God. You could know good and evil, but that won't make you like God, will it? And so that's the story of how Eve was lied to. And tomorrow we're going to find out what happens. We're going to find out how come you and I know how to sin. I want to ask you a question. I want you to think about it so you can answer me tomorrow, okay? You're not going to answer me now, but I want you to think about this question tonight. I want you to think about this. Who taught you to lie? Who taught you to lie? Don't answer me. I want you to think about it. Who taught you? I want to ask you another question. Who taught you to steal? Mommy. Oh, you don't tell me you haven't ever taken something that wasn't yours. Your mom and dad maybe said, don't touch that. Don't take that. And you did. Who taught you that? Who taught you to do that? Your mom and dad probably didn't, did they? Your mom and dad didn't say, this is how you lie to me. This is how you take something that isn't yours. Your parents wouldn't teach you that. I want you to think about it, and tomorrow we're going to talk about it, okay? Let's pray. We're going to ask God to help us to remember the things that we've learned here today, and tomorrow we're going to finish what we're talking about here this morning. Okay, let's pray. Father, thank you for these boys and girls and for how good they've paid attention. God, they're just a wonderful group, and I'm so grateful that you brought them here today. Lord, I pray that by the end of this week, every single one of them would know where sin came from, they'd know where they came from, and they'd know what you've done to make it so that they can have forgiveness for sin. We pray that you would open their eyes and their hearts to understand. I pray that they'll have a lot of fun the rest of today and tomorrow and all the rest of this week, and that you'll bring them back, and I pray that you'll bring their friends and their family, and we'll have a wonderful week, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 All right, boys and girls, who's next?
Mr. Tosh? I am. All right. Thank you, Pastor Price. That was very good. And guys, um, just to follow up, God is always good. Okay? Don't you ever forget that, boys and girls. God is always good. And Satan does not always tell the truth. Thank you, Pastor, for that. I just want to talk to you guys real quick. You guys did a great job listening and paying attention. Remember spirit points? Well, part of my spirit points is to see which team pays attention, which team sits up straight, participates, and, and answers questions. Okay? And I guess... Gosh, they were both really good. I, I, both I, sides were really good today. I know. I know. And I was just about to tell them that I didn't give anybody spirit points today because you both were really good. So keep that up. Okay? That's actually a good thing that not one team got spirit points, okay? So we're doing really good. I'm gonna tell you the scores right now, okay? Now, before I tell you the score, actually, let me tell you the score first, all right? Green team, after today's competitions and games, you have 450 points. Woo! Right. Yeah. 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 Very, very good. That's a lot of points. You know what, I wish I had that much money. That'd be awesome. You know what we do? We'd all go to Disney World. I'd take you all to Disney World. Actually, that wouldn't be, uh, that'd be enough for like three of us, probably. To walk through the door. To walk into the door, exactly. All right. So, and then the yellow team, let me go ahead and tell you the yellow team, you guys did great today. 800 points. Awesome. Awesome. Awesome job. Now, as I say that, I'm going to tell you that everyone listen. Here we go. I'm going to tell you the two things that are going to get you the most points. Okay? The first thing is your verses. You need to make sure that you say your verses. You can say John 1-1 one, one tomorrow when you come back to register. Okay? If you come back, you get a chance to give your team points and work for the special prize. All right? The second thing that's going to get you more points is if you bring a visitor. Everybody that comes and probably brings their neighbor or their cousin or their brother or sister, you bring a visitor, you get 500 points for your team. 500 points. That means if one person from the green team brought a visitor tomorrow, you guys would be in the lead. That's how important it is for you to bring a visitor. So everybody needs to try to bring a visitor and then our helpers will record that so we can get the points tomorrow for you, okay? Let's sing. Let's sing He is King, all right? So everybody stand up, stand up. You guys have been sitting for a while. You guys did very good today, very good today. So one more time, let's stretch. Hold on, Mr. Ripple, hold on, hold on. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'm gonna wake them up a little bit. Let's stretch, let's stretch. Stretch, yes, we're sitting, oh yeah. Stretch the Uba Ubas and the Skibby Daddies. Make sure you get that. Okay? Alright.